Hello everyone, welcome back to Gent Watches, and today I'm going to be watching episode 5, I really should remember this before I start, episode 5 of Ranking of Kings. So, um, we got some, we got some stuff today because, uh, last episode had two pretty big cliffhangers. The first was that, uh, it turns out the swordsman who was following Boji around is, I suppose, uh, is the assassin who was uh, hired to, well, who, who was probably told to eliminate Boji. This is the stuff I'm presuming based on the events that happened at the end. Essentially, he pushed him into Hellfire. So, uh, that was a pretty crazy, crazy twist of events. Um, and the second thing was that uh, Dida is going to now be tr trying to get the king's power? Is that what it was? I can't remember exactly what the wording of it was, but he's basically, I think, following what the magic mirror wants him to do. So he might be becoming more evil. Boji is, you know, in a place where he might be in a very dangerous place now. He might be dead. I mean, I don't think he's gonna be dead. I expect, like, so sometimes shows will pull a twist where they kill off who you think is gonna be the main character, right? And that's that's always really crazy and stuff. Uh, and generally they try to hide it in the med like they try not to give any meta knowledge that would lead you to believe that was the case Like if they wanted you to really believe that they they wouldn't put the real main character in the intro for example, but um, But using the meta knowledge of since the Character Boji is in the intro with Kage constantly It does imply to me that there is a point in the show where the two get together and Boji therefore isn't going to die because that's kind of too specific of a thing to put in the intro for it not to ever happen. And since it also seems like the conceit of the show, like, yeah. I, I shouldn't be explaining why I think the protagonist is not going to die, because most people would just be like, well, he's Boji, he's not going to die. But I think I think it's important to give the show some benefit of the doubt when it's trying to, when it's trying to tell you, like, oh, the main character might be dead. You, should, you have to humor it a little, right? You can't just be like, I know he's not. But, I mean, you can. But it sort of takes away some of the enjoyment. So instead, think about it. Is there is it possible for Boji to die? I think probably not. So uh, let's get into this episode, episode five of Ranking of Kings. Here we go. Oh, oh. He was saved. Well, we've seen he's able to like maneuver in midair. Whoa. Whoa, is, is Kage in there? Is that possible? That Kage's in that bag? Or is he like supremely lucky? Is it Kage? Kage? Guess who's here? Yay! <laughs> hey. The guy who is robbing you is your most trusted friend. And the person who's been teaching you since you were a child, or even younger, tried to kill you. Be big boys, okay? <laughs> Good job! You held it together. Oh, not really. You tried. Your face right now. <laughs> Aww. That's cute. I want to apologize in advance during this reaction. If I yawn or I'm rubbing my eyes or something, um, it is. I got very bad sleep last night, so that is the reason. You might be able to see how tired I am. I do definitely feel very tired. Can't read it. Katamiyao. The, the entire the time? Yeah, I thought that was convenient. Oh! That's how it got out safely. That makes sense. When you were about to bite into that poison meat. Oh! The meat! I, was right there to help you out each time. I thought the kunais were the one that poisoned the meat. And I think I just thought that because of Demon Slayer. In Demon Slayer, they had poisoned kunais. Guy asked me to you. He's tough 
to read though. Not sure what he's really up to. Oh. But anyway, that's a twist. Coming after you. Interesting. Yeah, you're still torn up about that and well, rightfully so. It. That's the way life can be sometimes. Oh my god. That reminds me of Sunny Boy. Who can make you the mightiest man there is. Here we go. You called your majesty? Is this a flashback? When you voted for the next king. <laughs> is that right? Uh, you fool. Oh! And did you think nothing of your duty to your pupil, you coward? You betrayed my brother in handing me the crown and upon my court. I have no defense, your majesty. I didn't expect this. On that day after I sparred with you, I was sure you were someone I could trust. Truly, I was. Yet you've defied my best expectations. Uh, I have to pause this for a second so I can get this thought out. What does this remind? This reminds me of in, um, I mean, it reminds me of a few things, but it reminds me of, I remember in, in The Last Airbender, um, and if you haven't seen The Last Airbender, then skip forward 30, 30 to 40 seconds. Um, but at the end of The Last Airbender, where Azula basically had all these people around her, that, but she had done so much backstabbing b betrayal of people that she was at the point where she couldn't trust anyone else. This is sort of like that, but a little different, because Dida um, seems to... Basically, he's like, look, you jumped on my side... You jumped on the winning side, but, like, you, uh, if you couldn't back up Boji, how do I know you're not going to do the, turn around and do the same thing to me? Which, in a way, is wise. He's, the, Dida is a more complex character than I thought he'd be. But what must be done next is something I could only ask of a servant whom I can trust absolutely. Please, <laughs> you can trust me. Kill Boji. It could be. This is also a complex character. Wow. What does uh, Bryce Pappenbrook think of all this when he gets back? I, I don't know if he was in on it. He didn't seem to be. It's just a little cloth crown. Way more like yourself. I mean, in this animation style, it looks the same as an actual crown. There goes that. Oh. King Rock. Oh, King Skull. <laughs> that guy, that skull has claim to the throne now. If this was Game of Thrones, he would. You smell something? Like what? He's saying calm? His resolve? A sworn ally who shared the joys and sorrows of your father. A satisfactory answer. Yes. Um, it's a bit vague, not entirely satisfactory, but so this is where he's getting the power. I don't know how it works. Does he have to earn it? Oh, hello. Sideshow Bob. Please enter. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's the king himself. Oh, so it's like cryogenic stasis? Is that the sort of idea that they're going for? He Keeping it fresh? Yeah. What do you have to do? Eat him? They're gonna grind him up, blend him. Tell me what's happening Father now. Smoothie. Oh my gosh, are they, are they actually gonna blend him? Oh my gosh, I was joking! Calm down! What? Don't tell me you actually have to, like, drink that. Uh... Oh, that would be too much to drink. Yeah, okay. You monsters, how could you do that? This is where it begins, King Dida. 
Oh my gosh, is it actually going to be drinking it? Or is it just going to be like bathing in it or touching it or... Having a bit of it. No, those horses look tiny compared to those people. Just the armor is so large. Okay, mixed with a potion. Sounds like you do have to drink at least a little bit of it. Although if you only had to drink a little bit of it, they could have just blended his feet. You know, instead of the entire body. That's a long spear. Is that still effective that long? Seems like when you tape three brooms together to try to reach something really high. And it just like bends. Oh, great. It's just one egg. Hey. Oh, oh, okay. It is. There's a lot of disgusting stuff going on, but now there's large bird. Now do you have to eat the bird? Fried chicken? Do you tame the bird? If you tame the bird, you have a creature that's as strong as a king, possibly? Whoa, they just kill it right away? Bro! You just made life and then killed it. And then fried it up. I guess that's that's the meat industry for you. Oh my gosh. Its body has been burned. Now, that dream. looks terrible, but at least it's not as large as I expect. I thought he would have to drink a massive jug. Drink this. What if he doesn't? What if it just turns him evil? Drink. You're trusting the magic mirror. Who knows what it's goals are. See, it just laughed. I won't. <gasps> How could I trust this vile concoction? But King Dido, does that mean you don't trust me? Correct. I what you're asking. Have, have you, you forgotten forget? your drop in the ranking? How could I forget? That's exactly the reason I have to try harder. For as long mm -hmm. as it's... Venturing into this world, you'll find that it refuses to slow its workings to accommodate your pace. This is an interesting character. Wow. I see. I see. I don't think he's gonna do it. And if I drink this, will I? Prince Dida, no endeavor worth your while will offer an easy path. At times, your struggles will define you. Keep that in mind, and don't be deceived by those around you. Is he taking? Especially yourself. Is he taking that as I should? I should struggle. This I is the easy it. route. King Dida. That's enough, Mira. Nice. Then so be it. It is for your own sake. Are they gonna try to force feed it to him? Nice. Wow, I'm rooting for King Dider in episode five. Do Unexpected. I will take the top rank by my own power. No, you, you can't. <laughs> you need to like spread it more so that it's harder to scoop up. Because if they were to scoop that back up and force feed it to you or give it to Boji, they might try to force it on Boji somehow. There might be more left over that they can force on Boji. Oh no. Yeah, Bryce was not in on this. I should learn the character's name, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> hmm. A giant stripped of his power. Oh my gosh. The son of boss has come here. Look at his mouth. It like stretches this way and that way in different ways. You got to do the orders. The orders you're given. By my hand. Oh my gosh. You dare? I have to. Oh. 
You're a fool. Who's the fool? <laughs> He's not going to win. Look how long that sword is. Oh. I think he's going to die here and now. Oh no. Is that it? Is that death? Oh. Oh. Strike through and sever my hand. Oh! Hit him with the blunt edge of the sword. Ugh! Oh! 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 Ah! Oh my gosh! Alright, well that episode was... Uh, very interesting. Very interesting. So I've got some, and as I, as I said partway through the video, as long as it makes it into the edit, but I'm pretty sure it will. Um, I am very tired right now. So if I am, um, if I seem tired, it's not because I'm uninterested. Um, I, I definitely was very interested in this episode. I, it is purely a lack of energy from not having much sleep. Um, so, I wrote down a few things that I, I wanted to, to talk about from this episode, because it was episode episode 5, and uh, it was a follow-up on quite a huge, um, quite a huge twist of, of events. And in this episode, we had a, a very logical progression, but in ways that I didn't expect, which is very cool. So, I didn't... I... I thought Kage might have been the one to save Boji at one or two points, but I didn't expect that Kage was just straight up in his bag and all of those moments were Kage. And yeah, those, um, I, I called them kunais. I don't know if that's what they're called, but the little throwing, like, the pointy throwing arrows. Um, those, those things, I, in my head, I was like, well, they're poisoned because in Demon Slayer, um, in the later season of Demon Slayer, there are ones of those that are poisoned, and they throw them, and then it poisons them. And so I just thought, oh, it's that's that's what they are. They're poisoned. I didn't think that it was like, no, the meat was poisoned because the swordsman made it. So he was trying to poison Boji right then and there. So the meat was poisoned, and he was and Kage was like, I ain't letting you eat poisoned meat, and he stopped it. That's great. That's a really cool moment. Um, and so yeah, all of those moments were really cool. I am impressed with Bryce Pappenbrook's character, with him being such sort of a fearful apprentice type character. And then at this point, he was like, I vowed to protect Boji. And, and you killed him. I don't care that you're my master. I don't care that you're the person in charge here. Like, you killed him. I, I'm, I'm gonna stand up for what I believe in. And he fought. He fought against the guy who, like, basically, almost certainly, is ten times better than him at swordsmanship. And it seems like that that ending shot of him, or that ending bit of him being like, sever my arm, and then the guy not being able to do it, and then him just cutting off his own arm. I think, I think he's trying to atone for it. You know, he's trying to atone for his own, his own perceived weakness, where he's like, I. I should have a scar from this battle. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. Is he? He's like I. Like, because I think he could have easily blocked Bryce Pavenbrook's character, but he decided to block with his arm instead and let it be cut and then finish the job on his own arm. So I think he's like I. Either he's feeling the the incredible guilt and is like I deserve to be hurt because of what I did to Boji. Or he's feeling like he's not strong enough, so he's like, I deserve to be hurt for my own weakness because I feel bad about what I did to Boji. Or it's uh, it's a little bit of column A and a little bit of column B, where he thinks what he feels is that he's weak, but what he actually feels is just pure guilt. But, uh, but I mean, the... the None of this stuff is confirmed yet. These are all just my theories. I mean, the the fact that he feels weak and he feels guilty, those are those have been confirmed. He straight up said those. Um, so the king's power. 
So, Dida is an interesting character because I think he's a twist on the Joffrey type. Okay, I'd be interested to know when the manga was written. Was the manga written post Game of Thrones? Not necessarily post the Song of Ice and Fire, but specifically post Game of Thrones. Because even though a Song of Ice and Fire had all of these Joffrey tendencies, um, I think a Game of Thrones not only or Game of Thrones not only popularized that, but also gave a look to it. Because uh, Jack Gleason is that Joffrey's actor's name? Um, because Dida looks quite a bit like like a Jack Gleason esque character. So. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if this character purposefully base is purposefully based off of Joffrey, but it's it's hard to think that right because like it, this is a Japanese piece of media, but Japan also takes in a lot of Western media just like we take in a lot of of Eastern media right we take in a lot of anime and they tend to take in especially the more popular ones. So I would think Game of Thrones would be famous enough over there that it's culturally recognizable. But maybe not. Maybe it's just like really popular over here and over there it's like, it's like, yeah, people who are super into like Western culture know and love Game of Thrones, but people who like just your average everyday person wouldn't know it. I don't know. I don't know what the climate is like in Japan in, in regards to the Game of Thrones stuff. But I do think it, it feels very, uh, very much like they're playing off of that trope, that type of character where he's just the jealous brother prince, but now they're flipping it because we can see he legitimately was, I mean, in the last episode, in his dream sequence, he seemed to care about Boji. In this episode, he seemed to snap at the swordsman for betraying Boji. And in this episode, he decided he had right in front of him the power of the previous king in his hands. All he had to do was chug down a disgusting thing and you do that, people do that at parties. They chug down terrible alcohol. So he could have done that. And I think he had the will to do it, but he didn't think it was right because it's not his power. So that could either be self-centered in that, well, like if I'm gonna be king, I'm gonna earn it myself or it's actually kind of noble. Whereas like, if I'm gonna be king, I should be, like, if I'm gonna be a top ranking king, I should be top ranking on my own merits, not on the merits of my father. And that's that's somewhat noble in itself. I really think the the way that they're gonna go with Dida is not the way of a villain. I think, I think, I mean, they've set up the magic mirror, so I, I, the magic mirror is like most likely to be like the actual villain. But I think that, I think Dida, I mean, we, we probably, We'll have a confrontation where it's like kind of a villainous confrontation between Dida and Boji, but I don't think it's gonna last very long. And I think the ending of the show isn't gonna be Dida being defeated in disgrace. I think it's gonna be Dida either seceding the throne, like giving it to Boji, or maybe even, I think I predicted this before, maybe even Dida just being on the throne and Boji being support and just, or them having the throne together. Or Dida dying for Boji. I mean, these are all things that I can see happening, but I think I think Dida is going to come out looking good to us, the viewers. Um, and last last thing is just uh, I, I found it interesting that they called Boji a giant stripped of his power. I I didn't really think about it, but we knew that. But it, it's I, I guess maybe we didn't know that he was stripped of his power per se, but we knew that he was the offspring of two giants. Uh, I don't know if we we had heard specifically the term giant in the show yet, but I mean they were two giant people, so makes sense that uh, that they're, they're two giants. Um, but he doesn't he doesn't seem to have any of this pure strength that the giant race tends to have. Um, and Dida, I guess, is half giant, right? Because he, it's probably the father and um, the stepmother, the queen, queen, whatever her name is. I can't remember her name. Um, but yeah, so he's probably half giant, but Boji's like full giant, I think. So that's interesting. That's going to come into it at some point, but I don't know how. Um, anyway, uh, that was episode five of Ranking of Kings. So thank you for joining me, everyone. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel and comment down below, add into the discussion. Uh, really, really helps me out when I have stuff to read and, and have new perspectives on the show and make sure to like the video as well. Um, but thank you for joining me for this episode, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!